This is session three of the planner training session looking at new tasks. Okay, so here we are in a brand new empty plan. Um, and what we can see here is uh, a task level zero. So we have the completely calculated outline task for the entire project plan. And this is going to roll up as a summary all the activities and summaries within this particular project plan. We also have one empty new task here for us. Uh, and we can either click into this to edit it or we can choose to add a new item. For now I'm going to first uh, add a new item which I can either do using the button in the ribbon here or by right clicking in uh, the Gantt or task list area and using add. So let's do add item and it's going to ask us first of all for a task name so I'm uh, going to give it a quick name which is uh, planning and I could put a description in here if I wanted to about what I expected people to do on the task. I could provide hyperlinks. I could even provide links to local files uh, to include there as well. So anything we want to there to help document the, the, the activity. We also have a tag area here which allows us to put in keywords or phrases which we might be interested in searching on later. So if something's to do with external parties or if it's a high risk activity or something like that that we might be interested in looking for and that can be updated at any time. We then have the decision about whether this task is a normal task or a summary task. Uh, and a normal task we get to set its own percentage complete and start end dates and resource information. Um, summary tasks, those things are uh, inherited from the tasks that sit within it. And then here we have the summary task uh, for this particular task. So here it's in none because there isn't a summary level. The level zero is an automatic one. We don't need to worry about that at the moment. So we're just going to put our task in essentially at the top level of the plan. So we don't have any percentage complete uh, activity to record on our task at the moment. So we can come straight down here to setting the duration. And we have four choices here for setting the duration. The first one is to pick a date and a duration from that date. And so uh, looking at the calendar, it would then determine what the end date of that task is going to be based on the number of working days or hours in that period. So we can enter our duration in, in hours and days if we want to. We can also uh, enter our start date in, in hours and days. Um, and it can either be at a particular particular time or at the start of the day and often that's what we're interested in doing bringing it back to the start of the working day as set in the calendar so this calendar is using an 8 uh, in the morning till 5 in the evening uh, working day so I can set my task here for today which is what it's come in as or I could pick a different day using the calendar here and we can then give it a duration so I'm going to say this is going to run for 10 working days and uh, we can then create and close that task or if we're going to add a series of tasks here we can come back here and create and add another one. So there's my task I can see behind the screen here that that's been added already um, and I'm going to add my next task now. Um, I'm going to not bother keep changing these task names I'll just leave it to the automatic one so we've got new task for um, and this is going to be a normal task as well and this is going to come in um, perhaps after the preceding task so rather than picking a fixed duration I'm going to go for a single predecessor so I want my task to finish after the preceding task and it automatically prompts me with that it thinks that's what I might be looking for and I can make that task a certain duration if I want to so I'm going to make it five days and I could also choose to have it uh, have a lag so it doesn't start immediately after it leaves a gap before it chooses to start but we'll leave that as a zero for the time being so create and add another and we'll see behind the scenes now that that's showing the task starting after the preceding one and so let's have a look at the next type of um, predecessor so what I could do is have a look at a multiple predecessors arrangement. 
So here, rather than just having it finishing after one task, one particular task is finished, I can look for it to start after a combination of things. So here I'm going to look for multiple predecessors, and I need to there type in the, uh, the, the names of the tasks. I can still see them here, though. So I'm going to start um, after task one, uh, and then also after task two, but we're going to put a lag on task two of ten days. I can check that to make sure that what I've typed in here is of a sensible format. And I can create and add another. So we can see again that that's followed the instructions we asked it to. Um, we've got starting after both of them, it's put a lag in because this one, uh, this one here needs a longer period before the next one starts. So now my next task that I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to use the final type of duration, which is fixed dates. So this one, I pick the date it's going to start and pick the date it ends, and it will work out what the duration of, ta of days are in that. So let's come down here and look for um, some date but in the future. So we'll go and pick a few weeks' time. So let's pick a date sometime uh, after that. There we go, and create and close. So there's my tasks that I've been busy adding. And we've got some information about them here. We can see that building down in the list at the bottom. Um, and it's also potentially got quite a lot of other fields here that we've not populated uh, yet. We're going to have a look at those as we progress through the, uh, the next um, sessions. So that was a very quick look at adding some tasks, looking at the sort of predecessors or how we're setting the dates for them. Um, and how we're filling in the basic information on uh, that particular task. Now, of course, if we want to edit a task, we can simply click on it in the list and use Edit Item. Then we can open that task up and change it around. So we could add extra details here. We could change the arrangements around its duration, etc. We could add extra things in the commentary area. And the idea of commentary is to keep a running set of notes around what's actually happening on the task, rather than breaking into um, a pretty structured description, which is probably not going to change too much as the task goes on, but the notes about how we're getting on with that and problems we might be finding, etc., can go into the comments field instead. Okay, so that's the end of session three, looking at new tasks.